Marine experts say that less than 5% of our world's oceans have been explored. In fact, we know more about the moon and the sky above than we do about the deep blue sea below. No human can swim at these depths. There's no telescope that can see the bottom, and only a few people have been able to reach the very bottom using very sophisticated diving machines. However, there are no guarantees when you're exploring uncharted territory. The risks are huge, and that's why fathoming something so deep is a little bit freaky. But you won't need a life preserver for this ride into the unknown. This is why the ocean is a scary place. Spawn of Godzilla These waters, centered chiefly on sandy shores, extend from Sagami Bay to Manazuru Cape. At the mouth of this river are found the only tidal mudflats, important settlement grounds for animals in the bay. Beasts like the Megamouth Shark, Smalltooth Sand Tiger, Frilled Shark, Goblin Shark, Bowmouth Gutterfish, Whale Shark and others appear with some frequency. But again, that doesn't explain this. Is it even alive? Suspended in its ocean skate perfectly protected by the elements, Godzilla is a monster originating from a series of Japanese films. The legend first appeared in the 1954 film Godzilla and became a worldwide pop culture icon, appearing in various media, Hollywood films and numerous video games, novels, comic books and television shows. Godzilla has been dubbed the king of the monsters. Is this what we're looking at here? Is this an enormous, destructive, prehistoric sea monster awakened and empowered by nuclear radiation? Cameras aboard the Hyper Dolphin remotely operated vehicle captured this footage of something strange lurking on the ocean floor of Sagami Bay, southwest of Tokyo. It couldn't possibly be the spawn of the king of monsters. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. Between Hawaii and the Philippines since the Mariana Trench. Ever heard of it? We're talking about the deepest place in the entire ocean, at a maximum depth of almost 7 miles. To give you some perspective on just how deep that is, if you were to put the entire Mount Everest at the bottom, its peak would still sit around 7,000 feet below sea level. Could that sort of depth be where this machine is coming from? Are those protrusions in the sea just the tip of some sort of massive underwater mothership driven by an alien race that lives beneath the waves? Or maybe there are the fins of some insane giant water robot, like something out of a Hollywood blockbuster. If it is movie magic, then this is definitely the type of flick we'd like to watch. If it's real, then that's a whole other thing. How would you feel if you saw this rising out of the sea? Or maybe you wouldn't stick around to watch? Still, comment either way down below using the hashtag SweetTopic. Eye of the Fire These bright orange flames jumping out of the water resemble molten lava were dubbed an Eye of Fire due to the blaze's circular shape as it raged a short distance from an oil rig platform. Video of fire breaking out of the Gulf of Mexico has gone viral. The fire reportedly broke out after a gas leak. It began in an underwater pipeline that connects to a platform at Pemex's flagship oil development, the company's most important near the southern rim of the Gulf. According to sources, workers had used nitrogen to control the fire and the resolution was affected by an electrical storm and heavy rains. However, no injuries were reported and production from the project was not affected after the gas leak ignited about 5.15 a.m. local time. It was completely extinguished by 10.30 a.m. It's unclear how much environmental damage has been caused. However, they produce more than 40% of its 1.7 million barrels of daily crude oil in these waters. The fire took more than five hours to fully put out because this gas leak west of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula broke out of the underwater pipeline, causing flames to appear to boil up to the surface and create what many called an eye of fire. Creepy Colonies Shocked divers discover a mysterious giant glowing tube in Tasmanian waters. What is it? They found themselves a monster deep sea worm measuring more than 26 feet long and looking just like a giant windsock. They were diving off the coast in a straddle volcano when they discovered the gelatinous worm. Initially diving to record footage for the island, their focus was stolen by the hollow creature. What an incredible and unbelievable moment to capture on film. The worm can be seen moving delicately through the water, occasionally shuddering and pulsating while the divers swim gently around it so as not to disturb it. 
These giant glowing sea worms aren't actually worms though, they're pyrosomes, free-floating bodies made up of multiple tiny bodies to create one big body. They're called the unicorns of the sea and they're soft like a feather boa. These pyrosomes are just another reminder of just how weird the ocean can be. Weird and wild. One long pyrosome is actually a collection of thousands of clones with each individual capable of copying itself and adding to the colony. And pyrosome members are physically connected, actually sharing tissues. They get their names from this feature pyro, which means fire in Greek, and soma, which means body. Fire bodies. Their blue-green light can be seen more than a hundred feet away. <laughs> Kraken wants to paddleboard. Giant squids are elusive, mysterious creatures that have starred in more than a few pirate legends, but this Kraken seems to be in some distress. You can imagine having one try to steal your paddleboard while you're still riding it would feel a little too intense for most people's comfort, which probably makes this paddleboarder the almost victim of nautical robbery or the chillest dude on the planet. In the video, you can see the giant squid wrapping its tentacles around Taylor's board as he ties a rope around it to drag the big lug to shore. Normally, an encounter with a giant squid wouldn't materialize so easily with close contact, but this particular giant squid happened to be injured and was unable to swim away. He recently shared the video chronicling a run-in with the injured giant squid in the waters of a coastal village about 20 miles north of Cape Town. In a Facebook comment on his profile explaining the encounter, it was made clear that he made the decision to wrangle the squid on shore after he saw that it was lethargic, covered in bite marks, and missing some of its tentacles. We doubt we'd be able to keep our cool on this paddleboard excursion. <laughs> Kayaking with Crocs This unexpected footage from Costa Rica shows this kayaker coming face to face with a crocodile. The largest reptile on Earth, the saltwater croc, can grow to lengths surpassing 20 feet. This prehistoric creature is the apex predator of river ecosystems, found in a vast region around the world, including India, to Papua New Guinea, all the way to Australia. Sri Lanka is home to around 2,500 to 3,500 of them, more than half of which are found in national parks. Fables about crocodiles are legendary and as of late, the crocodiles that inhabit the river have been the subject of news. Sometimes they can even be found in urban areas. An increase in the number of crocodile attacks on people has been recorded in recent years despite measures to prevent conflict between man and croc. Salties are aggressive and there are many cases of deaths recorded due to their attacks. The saltwater crocodile is a large and opportunistic hypercarnivorous apex predator. It ambushes most of its prey and then drowns or swallows it whole. It's capable of prevailing over almost any animal that enters its territory, including other apex predators such as sharks, freshwater and saltwater fish, crustaceans, reptiles, birds and mammals, including humans. It doesn't look like this croc has much interest in this kayaker. <laughs> Mysterious Spear Hunter Footage shows a fish being hunted with a spear by a mystery figure hundreds of feet deep into the sea. This video was shot by a scientist while they check the oil tank and capture a creature in the deepest ocean spearing a fish. Could there be a hunter under the waves that uses a spear to secure a meal? Like a spear hunting mer person? In European folklore, mermaids and mermen were natural beings who, like fairies, had magical and prophetic powers. They loved music and often sang luring sailors to their demise. Spearfishing isn't a sport that has strict depth rules. Since there are no guidelines about how deep a diver should go, it usually depends on a diver's ability and preference. But at over 2,000 feet, it would be almost impossible to successfully hunt in those waters. Whatever's hunting this fish, it definitely isn't human. Additionally, the deeper you go, the higher the risk. With increased depth and pressure, the diver is more susceptible to oxygen toxicity because their body absorbs more oxygen. Oxygen toxicity can lead to life-threatening side effects like tunnel vision, nausea, loss of consciousness, and seizures. But is this the proof believers need to finally convince the world that spear-hunting mermaids actually exist? <laughs> Horrifying Statues At the end of Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, the main character Tommy Jarvis vanquishes Jason Voorhees once more by literally chaining him to the bottom of Crystal Lake. 
returning him to the site of his original death as a child. Of course, horror icon Jason remains alive at the bottom of the lake, eventually returning for more murder in the subsequent film. That's Hollywood for you. No matter how much Jason Voorhees has scared us over the years, we can take solace in the fact that he's not real. The goalie mask wearing unstoppable slasher from the Friday the 13th franchise haunts dreams, and everyone knows he's merely a fictional character, right? Something tells us that knowledge isn't particularly comforting for scuba divers in Minnesota when they unexpectedly come across his statue at the bottom of a mine pit. It's the work of Doug Klein. He built this nightmarish, fantastic piece, replete with machete in hand. Then Klein placed it 120 feet at the bottom of a spot for divers in Crosby, Minnesota, specifically in a mine pit known as Luis. And yes, the Jason Voorhees statue survived. More video of the statue show it looking like an absolute nightmare as you swim past. Number 8 <laughs> Deep Sea Aliens A video of a bizarre creature that transforms underwater has surfaced on the internet leaving the netizens completely shocked. The video has been captured by a remotely operating vehicle at a depth of 3,753 feet in the Indian Ocean. You never know what you're going to find when you go that deep. The video begins with the object floating in the water. Its physical attributes are not similar to any of the known species. As the video progresses, we see the object slowly transform into a black ball-like shape, and sometime it opens up from the round structure and then elongates. It starts to glow in stripes. Lights of different colors can be seen traveling through the object. Slowly, it can be seen spreading its fin-like structures. Towards the end of the video, the object gets caught up in the output from the rove thrusters. It's majestically drifting, shape-shifting, glowing, and majestically does a couple of cute spins and gets brutally ripped apart and tossed in the void. Stunned by the video, netizens took over the comment section, and since being uploaded, the video has managed to gather millions of views, and we can see why. Maybe outer space is not the only place aliens are reported to exist. They could be living in our oceans. <laughs> Slender Squid Big fin squids are one of the deep sea's more ethereal, unusual creatures. Their fins are up to 90% of the length of their body, and they have next-level long arms. This footage shows the big fin squid at a depth of one and a half miles. One of the rarely seen squid loiters above the seafloor in the Gulf of Mexico. They were first discovered in 1907. And as you can see, the squid often will hold some of the arms at a 90-degree angle from the side of the body, which gives them the appearance of having elbows. The distinctive elbow-like kink is another subject of curiosity. It could be a way to prevent their spaghetti-like tentacles from getting entangled. The appendages come with microscopic suckers that can land them in sticky situations. Scientists believe that they feed by dragging their arms and tentacles along the seafloor, grabbing organisms off the floor. The video clip shows the monitor framed with pulsing impulse of time and positioning data. The clip, from a Shell oil company, arrived after a long trip. In a few seconds of jerky camera work, the squid appears with its huge fins waving like elephant ears and its remarkable arms and tentacles trailing from elbow-like appendages. <laughs> Whirlpools A whirlpool is a swirling water that's formed when two opposing currents meet. Powerful ones are mainly common in seas and oceans. Smaller whirlpools are common at the base of waterfalls and can also be observed in man-made structures such as dams. In oceans, they're mainly caused by tides and are capable of submerging large ships. You definitely don't want to swim in one of these. Notable oceanic whirlpools include those of Garofalo along the coast in southern Italy and of Messina in the strait between Sicily and Italy. As a strait located between Jura and Scarba Islands in Scotland, the underwater topography of the area and the strong current conspire to create a legendary whirlpool. As the tides enter the strait, it speeds up and meets a variety of seabed features such as deep holes and rising pinnacles. The features come together to form the third largest in the world. Naruto Strait, located in Japan, respectively is known for a tidal whirlpool. Because it's narrow, water rushes into it through the channel four times in a day, creating whirlpools up to 66 feet in diameter. The Deadly Blue Hole With the sport of freediving growing in popularity since Luc Besson's 1988 film The Big Blue, which brought it to the world's attention, thousands continue to flock here each year. 
unperturbed by the increasing number of plaques that hang on the cliff opposite to mark those who never returned. The Blue Hole is a 390-foot deep sinkhole, five miles north of Dahab. Its nickname is the Diver's Cemetery. Researchers say this giant underwater sinkhole was made by the collapse of a cavern formed during the glacial ages tens of thousands of years ago. Now, this swallow hole is one of the world's most famous diving zones. The hole forms a perfect circle in the midst of a coral reef, known as the Lighthouse Reef and also a section of the Belize Barrier Reef Reserve System, more than 984 feet across and 410 feet deep. Researchers consider the Great Blue Hole the largest of its kind and discovered huge stalactites, dripstone sheets, as well as columns inside the Blue Hole. Water levels in the surrounding areas of the sinkhole are so shallow, where the coral often breaks the surface at low tide. What do you think? Great place for a swim or a dangerous dive into the unknown? Below 185 feet, the seawall stops, revealing a cavernous 85-foot-long tunnel from the Blue Hole to the open ocean. Square waves. This phenomenon is rare yet extremely dangerous. Most of these unusual waves reach the shore and break horizontally and parallel to the coastline. However, in some regions of the world, you may notice the creation of a chessboard-like pattern on the surface of the water. Vessels fare better against large waves when perpendicular to the waves. In square waves, vessels are more likely to be stuck in a dangerous way. If you look at these waves from above, it seems like they're a grid underwater forming square-shaped ripples. You can easily spot the strange pattern by climbing to the top of the lighthouse, cliff, or by flying a drone over the area. However, cross sea waves or square waves are not a result of any circumstance that's taking place below the water. They're actually a sea state of wind-generating waves that form non-parallel wave patterns. Waves generated by the new wind run at the angle to the old. A cross swell is generated when the wave systems are longer period swells rather than short period wind-generated waves, but dangerous and unpredictable no less. The reason why square waves are dangerous is because they feature several currents coming from all angles. Ship Graveyards These islands were once part of the Spanish West Indies, explored by Megalin and later visited by Spanish merchants and missionaries. The low coral islands are surrounded by a remarkable sheltered reef, ideal for housing a navy. Today, South Pacific's Caroline Islands harbors the ghost fleet of Truck Lagoon. In a surprise attack by American allies in World War II, approximately 250 aircraft were destroyed and more than 50 ships sunk, and most of the fleet remains in exactly the same spot it was left, largely forgotten by the world until the late 1960s. The wrecks themselves can be very dangerous, not only because of ragged edges and tangles of cables, but because of half-century-old oil and fuel leaking into the water, creating a potentially dangerous situation. Jacques Cousteau's famous 1969 film Lagoon of Lost Ships explored the wreck-littered lagoon, and many of the sunken ships were then still full of bodies. As wreck divers brought attention to the site, Japan began recovery efforts and many bodies were removed and returned to Japan for burial. A few, however, remain. Many of the wrecks are visible through the shallow, clear water. Today, it's widely considered the pinnacle of wreck diving, a must-visit destination for both recreational and tech wreck aficionados. <laughs> Toxic algae Florida is well known for its year-round warm climate and beautiful sandy beaches. While beach tourism drives the state's economy, people who visit and live here are losing the long-standing beach trips that they cherish. Ongoing algal blooms, including red tides and toxic blue-green algae, are putting public health at risk and causing massive die-offs of fish, marine life, and sea turtles. Red tides were particularly devastating in 2017 and 2018, as coastal communities along the Gulf Coast of Florida suffered through an unusually persistent and toxic red tide that lasted for more than a year. Bloom conditions reached as far as the Atlantic coast late last summer, Public health was also affected as far as a mile inland through the release of airborne toxins from the blooms. Florida's governor declared a state of emergency and beaches in several East Coast counties were closed over the 4th of July holiday weekend. Florida's phosphorus problem is so acute that it's created a divide between the agriculture industry in the center of the state and tourism hubs on the Atlantic Ocean and Gulf of Mexico. Coastal residents increasingly blame the agriculture industry for the mess 
yet they insist they're not to blame. It's a messy and often deadly situation. Goblin Shark Its scary looks start with unusual coloring, from pinkish to purplish gray, with bright blue around its fins. The creature's muscles are flabby, its skeleton is mushy, and its weird skin is thin and transparent. Definitely a face only a mother could love. There's still a lot of mystery surrounding the life of these terrifying animals, the spooky Goblin Shark. But do we know where they live? The goblin shark has been known to lurk 5,000 feet below the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans, and it likely hunts its prey by exploring electrical fields. Crazy, right? But the strangest feature of this monster is its jaw. It can be extended to the length of its snout to help ambush fish, squid, and crustaceans. The goblin shark's jaws shoot out, racing forward at a whopping 10 feet per second, faster than any other shark. In fact, it's faster than most cobra snakes. At maximum extension, the jaws make up almost 10% of the shark's entire body. That's a huge chomp from a shark that grows to be over 10 feet long. The fish, however, is found in deep water and poses no threat to people. Just seeing one is scary enough. If you're not scared to jump into the ocean, then we failed. Just kidding. We know we've learned a lot though, and that's what matters. Don't go anywhere if you want to keep it going. Just like and subscribe first.